Alrighty. Hello, everybody. I'm sure it's a little early to say hello. We just clicked uh, live streaming and um, we'll be starting in a few minutes. But uh, let me give some uh, time for uh, people to gather here. And uh, today, this time, I did post it on my Facebook, my joining, conjoining Facebook pages. So, which is what? Um, <clears throat> I don't even know. Fretboard navigation for uh, for guitar, or something like that, and then um, rock music theory for rockhead guitarists. Um, some interesting names for some groups that might uh, attract a, a you know an audience, but um, I don't know which one I'm keeping, which one I'm, if I'm going to operate both or kind of it's kind of redundant to have um, say the same thing on two different channels. So I don't know really know kind of everything's you know new and forming here, I guess. So um, let me um, step out here and for a second. So if you're joining in, I appreciate it. And if you're uh, catching this video later on after it's live, just skip ahead a few minutes um, to get past. Uh, this point here but we'll be right back while we try to populate the room a little bit we'll get two or three minutes in and so um yeah i'll be right back I'll put the guitar down here i'll be right back Okay. <clears throat> All right, that was necessary. <clears throat> Got my coffee to sip on. Very good, very good. <clears throat> you guys, I mean, you didn't come here for this information, but you guys into bulletproof coffee? Well, I was, but I switched off of that diet for stuff a little bit more healthy i don't like dairy stuff so putting butter in the coffee was tasty i found and really cool but eh, it really didn't um cut it for me and um i'm not even big on advocating um you know 
putting fat in your diet for specific reasons for weight loss. I don't think I think that's a little gimmicky. But anyways, um, I'm still making my. I needed a fat for my coffee, some kind of something. So um, what I found was almond butter. Mm. Mix a little teaspoon of that in there with some coconut sugar and makes coffee taste great. And it's not overloaded with a ton of uh, five, fifteen ounces of sugar. Like that name brand place that we all like to get coffee from. Um, and whatever milk or whatever you'd usually get in there. But anyways, skip off of that. And another thing I wanted to say, somewhat not related to today's lesson, was that um, I wanted to, um, I thought it might be a neat idea to plug somebody else's music channel uh, on my videos. Um, I like it's the first thing, like, so... Um, Today's um, video, um, I'll say, um, it's not brought to you by, of course, but uh, inspired. It's inspired by uh, 12 Tone. Uh, check out 12 Tone's channel. It's just so awesome. Um, I love what he does. It's so interesting. And um, I love when anybody works on producing a video because I know how time consuming and hard it is to do that and make them good and edit i mean you get better at, at it after a while and you get faster at it but god lord so i'm all about these live videos lately but um yeah you guys need to uh, get on my back about um making some regular produced videos because my channel has been really lacking on that i haven't done one in a, i think a year um and there's just no excuse for that if I want to try to, you know, if I'm always worried that this channel's not growing, well, I need to put more effort into it. But I'm telling you, it's hard uh, trying to fit this in with all of my other hobbies and the day job. It just, uh, but, you know, then again, it's about priorities. It's what do I want to do first. So, okay. Um, <clears throat> today's lesson. Today's lesson. It starts now. The lesson starts now. So, um, I'll have to put it in the description to start at 7.20. Anyways, 7 minutes and 20 seconds. Hopefully you can hear this okay. I don't think I can turn it up any. Okay. I want to explore today some um, chord. What happens when you... Take a chord, for example, and change the root. And what this will do is show you, like, you know, how you can use this graph paper method to find anything out that you're doing on your guitar pretty quick and pretty easy. If it's, you know, not something you are good at... Um, visualizing in your in your head for example but after you do this for a while on graph paper all of a sudden it can be you know your mind my mind soaks that up and downloads it pretty easy then so anyways um let's consider this chord here it's um hard for you to see right now but i'm playing what i would call it's a dominant seventh chord and it's like a jazz version of a dominant seventh chord we know we're taught the basic bar version here where you bar a fret, let's say on um, today we're using the uh, ninth fret. All right, and then we're we do the fifth, which is the tenth fret, with that finger. Leave that one barred. That one down there. So that's the bar chord version. In this version, we're omitting this fifth, right? And we're just leaving that string blank. And so maybe we'll even fret, um, not advocating any bad technique here, but we'll fret with the um, thumb. If you're a Hendrix-inspired player, you do that already anyways, or Stevie Ray Vaughan, perhaps. Or almost any blues player. Now right 
off the bat. I'm just, you know, trying to hit the chord and I play a wrong one. But you got some musical there. And then you go to the right one and you say, hey, those chords could go kind of good together in a little piece. There's some real tension and some release. But that's still kind of a tense chord that always wants to go to the... Oh, did I just fuck that all that up? I did, I did, I did, I did. Sorry. That wants to go to the... So some advanced music theory that um, theory people will know this really easy and the newbies will have no idea what I'm talking about, that the uh, f- this is uh, the seventh chord, the dominant seventh chord. Did I say that already? Let me stress here, dominant seventh chord is what we're talking about. Um, always pulls to the one. I'm getting off topic. Oh, Lord. Um, so... What I wanted to start exploring today was this, uh, let's draw this, what I'm actually talking about here, so stop rambling about it and get to the point. Let's presume that this is the sixth string, the E string. So then we have five, four, three, two, one. E, A, D, G, B, E. For reference, you can use any fret you want on your guitar. So, like, for ex- in this example, we're on the... If this were an actual guitar fretboard we were drawing, we would be on the uh, third fret there. But anyways, I'm going to be up here fingering this shape. Uh, the note, that is this little, what I would consider that D chord shape. You know, when you play a D chord down here little triangle of notes. I always call that a triangle. It's kind of like a sideways triangle to me. Um, <clears throat> you play that up here with just this note. For all you total beginners like that have no idea about this or what chord this is, this is a dominant seventh chord. Why is this a dominant seventh chord? A dominant seventh chord needs to have a root note. All chords start with the lowest note as the root. Then they need a third uh, major third. So let's even let's uh let's make a little reference guide up here for all the new people. If you're brand new and totally don't understand any of this, just do this. So we're writing a little flat a little B for flat two and I write it a little smaller so it all fits and it kind of emphasizes that that's the flat two, this is the major two or regular two, um flat third, major third. If you're just getting familiar with your intervals, you know, write this down constantly. They'll very quickly become, you'll see the purpose and meaning of all these individual little players in the 12-tone 12 to- 12 team, you know. Kind of consider them, they all have their little individual roles in a 12-player team. But at any given time, only seven players on the field. Oh, wow, kind of cool. Sports analogy to music. Pretty neat, huh? <clears throat> come in live and ask me to clarify what the hell I'm talking about. So, um, we got the, uh, let's see, one, two, three, just to make sure we're right here, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve notes, flat seventh and the regular seventh, and you're back to the one, called the leading tone, and, um, so we want to spell out a dominant seventh chord so first of all a dominant chord is a major chord so we need root third fifth root major third fifth so we're gonna we're gonna need that note we're gonna need that note and we're gonna need that note and to make it a dominant seventh chord, we're going to need that note. If we selected that seventh note, it would be called a uh, seventh chord. Just This is a, n- a natural, regular, standard seventh chord using the leading tone, that one. Why is it called a leading tone? That's the do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. You know, it, that from ti, you really want to just hear do again even though 
do is the beginning of the next set of do re mi fa sol la ti do make sense so that creates a nice pleasant sound this creates a little more tension and it um assembles itself one time in the major scale set when you have a when you <clears throat> excuse me i have a terrible throat condition where it's like i try to talk and <clears throat> nothing but phlegm i'm going to use it as a message from the universe and i'm drifting off too much off topic here but um i can't go into too much theory for um people who get completely lost at at the beginning here but um a scale of notes is basically this would be do the 2 is re the 3 is mi the 4 is fa you can consider all these flats the um black keys on a piano fa do re mi fa so la and then ti do so when you get a scale of notes, that's your one, your two, your three, so your three, your four, your four, that's called your fifth, and your so when you build scales on these, they create um different chords. Well, cause see there's not always even spacing. So you'll have different combinations from each starting point. So you basically would get here, I'll just spell them all out for you, a major chord. If you started here, you'd get a whoa ho ho off the screen here. See, this is why you make videos that are edited for clarity and you avoid all this nonsense. Um and just chaos that ensues in these live lessons, but hopefully you're following along here. Major, minor, minor. So we got a big M and a small M. Write this note down for yourself so you know. And then we're going to put a 7 here because that's what forms off this 5th note here is the, a 7th chord, a uh, dominant 7th chord, which is using that flat 7th greater tension. And that great tension is, um, interestingly enough, associated with the chord that always leads to the least tension, the beginning major chord of the set. That's created off the 1 of Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, meaning you pick out, you select this note you skip a note you skip a note and you see um this is major because this if you skip a note it's a major third this one is minor because if you skip a note here you won't you will no longer see it here but if you shifted this over so it said root two three well you'll notice the fa is not all the way on the three it's one shy it's one shy it's the would this is what you would see in that box, flat third. And you'll know the thirds eventually. If you're a total beginner, this is sad and this is happy. Sad chord, happy chord, sad chord, happy chord, right? That's all we need to say and we got to move on. You have to do some learning there if you're stuck. Um, or ask some questions, right? So if you like, um, this is one way I can uh, consolidate some of the information in this, the rest of this video and the rest of my other videos is by saying that if you get stuck anywhere, just ask a question in the comments below. I'm sure I'll, I'll sure I'll get it and um, we'll make a video about it. So, or join up with one of these live videos and over in that um, comment window, which I have opened up on my screen, um, you can leave a uh, comment there. Okay, so... This may, this uh, Tom and seventh chord, <clears throat> we want as uh, root third, fifth, seventh. So here we have a root note. It's the lowest note. So we're going to basically are pinned on calling this one the root. So what is this in relation to a root? <clears throat> Sorry. Um, well, if we go all the way up and... Um, jump around it well if we um, did a major scale it's right up here but we're one down there we are that is the flat seventh 
it's always the flat seventh. If your root is here, that will always be your flat seventh. This is the neat thing about the guitar fretboard. Um, this will be maybe even amazing to some of you who haven't, you know, who feel like because <clears throat> certain things jump around like notes or chords change shapes and there's so many different ways the geometry plays on the on a stringed instrument like the guitar, a fretted stringed instrument like the guitar, um, that it may not seem like there's some things that are solid and always stay the same on your guitar fretboard, kind of like the piano keys don't jump around. Um, so that is uh, one key thing here. These intervals do not jump around. So this, if you have a root here, this will always be your flat seventh. Um, this note here will be your third. This would be either right here is the... Uh, let me uh, think of this for a second here. You can hear that, right? There's my root note on the low string. Now I'm going to play this this note. I say that's pretty harmonious, right? Now I'm going to play this note with this note. has a nice ring to it but not as harmonious sounds kind of troublesome it sounds kind of pleasing and happy oh minor third major third sad chord happy chord full sad chord full happy chord um the only difference there was that minor to major third major third what do we have left? We're looking for a fifth, and guess where that is? The fifth is way at the top here, and the thing with a fifth is you can pretty much place a fifth is so closely related to the root. You know, just you're going to find soon, if you're not familiar with any of this, that the root and five are just always together in some kind of way, and there's just a lot of dynamics going on, <clears throat> you know. And in this part, we're just dealing with simple intervals and just single tones. The root note always pairs with a fifth. Hey, a power chord, what do you know? Just a root and a fifth makes like a, like a empty chord shell and um, is used a lot in music because it leaves the, door the doorway open to travel out in major or travel out from there in minor. Um, take the music in any direction. Um, sometimes there's an implied key in the song and it won't matter that you're just playing those power chords because they'll just simply be in the key. Like, for example, if you play fifths all on the white keys of the piano. I don't even know if those were fifths. I just turned around and started playing some notes. Anyways, um, all those fifths will still be making up the key of C, so you wouldn't have as much liberty to, um, to venture out and sound um, correct, I guess, or harmonious. But um, I don't know, you know, you can do all kinds of things with music, so that all depends on something down the road. Let's get to the point here, and here is our, so we've described our, why, the rhyme and reason for this chord. Sorry, let me put my uh, fretboard up here. Um, oh, you know what happens, it's fucking, that's why this microphone keeps going down. My Walmart chair here sinks down, um, don't buy the $20 Walmart chair. <laughs> Not worth your time. Ugh. Help our channel invest in real um, equipment by supporting us on Patreon. <clears throat> All right. So what if we change that root? What happens to this chord? Well, we're going to draw out a whole nother. Let's put the root down here while still playing the same little three notes up here and uh 
We'll see what happens there. What's the spelling? Does it stay the same? Is it totally different? Does it change everything? And how does it sound? Not too bad. Let's check it out. Maybe next we'll check out that uh, mistaken chord I played in the beginning there. Okay, um, here, let's try that again. Wait a minute. This one, but that's based on a six. And then we got the five, and then we'll go to the four, and then the one. I don't know. I wasn't that happy with it. Anyways, <clears throat> thought I would come up with something that I thought uh, was interesting. Um, so we got a root here. What do we got next here? So the, anytime you're straight below a root, there's what interval is always below a root? That is always a fourth on the guitar. So we got root four. So we've got some kind of suspended chord right off the bat here. So um, what do we got? Root four. And then we've got a... So what's this to that? Now, it looks like the sev uh, 7. If I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, of course, because there's the octave. We know that as the octave pattern on the guitar. So one down from the octave is the... Seven. So what's this interval? Well, um, like, for example, I like might look at my fretboard and just have to think about that for a second. And um, as I do this exercise, eventually I won't have to think about it. But since I am struggling to think about it right now, uh, what I'll do quickly or what I would do if I was in like a band situation where I needed to kind of know this in short order. And eventually my ear will get, get into that too. I've got an idea about what it is. But anyways, I know that. Or just have gone down the octave that way. Now I'm really close to my root note. What's what's one whole step away from a root note? Um, a two. So now we have another suspended note in there. So we have like a four two. Since that two is high up, you might even want to consider that a ninth. And you have like a suspended add nine chord. You might call it a two four. Um, as a layman. There certainly is probably a definite name for this chord using some um, theory rules that involve chords that are, you know, not totally necessary for you to know to play this stuff or come up with this stuff and use it in a song and fit it in to some other music theory. Um, however, if you want to communicate with other like a piano player as to what the hell you're playing or what the hell they're playing and fit it all on your guitar, you may want to know, you know, that that is, you know, the equivalent of a ninth um, or the exact spelling and, and name of this chord. So that's a little later down the road, but it's interesting to know right now if you, you know, want to do, you know, uh, what happens, well, you know, when you move that root, why does it sound like it does? 
Why is it still somewhat harmonious when you've totally changed the root? Because you've given it a, a new chordal quality that has some um, definite chordal qualities. Suspensions. Fours and twos and chords are suspended notes. Um, because most chords are built one, three, five. You have the one, which is always the one. The three, which is a choice of threes. So here's what you can even do. You can say your three is a choice of three, major or minor. Your root will always be your root. Just put a star there because that will always be the root. And then your five will always be the five. So you can put kind of like its own kind of star there that shows its relationship there. And then you have, you know, your choice of sevens, which you can put here for dominant seven or a regular seventh chord. And then these are your suspensions. So you can put an S here for suspension, suspension, or in jazz terminology, <clears throat> when you put those way high up in the chord, you're getting your ninth, your eleventh, and your thirteenth. When they're down low in the chord, you can call that um, it's a sixth chord. And if you've heard of a chord with an augmented fifth, that's this note is in there. If you've heard of the tritone or a flat fifth in uh, a chord, that's this tone. In case you didn't know. Okay, so let's play some other root games here. Let's see if anything else sounds good. I'm going to move that root up one half step and see how it sounds. Okay, because I wouldn't really... Um, be pressed to use that and anything other than something pretty obscure we're gonna leave that one alone let's go up a uh, full tone on this string so we're basically we explored there we said nah no way um, let's give this one a shot right here not too bad almost looks like something I'm familiar with from down low on the fretboard let's draw it out on its own here let's keep our notes in check here let's put the notes down here and maybe we'll draw one up here so everybody can still see the notes oh. mm, all right this might work okay um where are we at here we're at here and then here and here and here so what else can we get so here we can get like a a dominant seventh here we can get something suspended the root is a fourth higher than the original root here we've moved the root a fifth so here we've moved the root a fourth here we've moved the root a fifth of the original root and what do we got so we got root note you know, here's another thing with these chords I just thought of. Um, like, for example, this one I was telling you about and figuring out the spelling down here. You know, another thing, another thing you could think of is this chord, as strange as it is in this setup, is an inversion, perhaps, of another chord. And you can find that out by uh, mapping out. <clears throat> Sometimes that becomes more clear if you... Um, well, what you could do is consider any one of these the root. So put your root here, and then if your root is at this chord, um, what does it become? And um, let's even go exploring that way. That's what we're going to finish this one off, and then we're going to go exploring another way. We're going to uh, explore uh, changing the root position within the uh, framework of the exact chord. Let's check that out and see what goes on. Okay, so here we would have a root. And um, we know that interval. Um, we should always know this interval going from here to there on a guitar. Just like the top of a G open chord. Or a C open chord. Is major. It's a major interval. So when we go to this interval here, which is not here to there, it's here to there. You can hear the minor third. A little bit more sad. 
but there's a strange note in there. Okay, so we have a minor third. And what's causing all that ruckus above the minor flat third? So if that is a flat third. <laughs> What is that note? It's kind of dissonant to the root. And it's a tritone, so it's got the ultimate of dissonance from the third there. So we're not doing too good. I think that that is a six, if I'm not mistaken. Well, we should know that this is our flat seven. This is our major seven. And this is the root. Seven, flat seven, six. So we've got a six right here. So what I just played was flat seventh and seventh. Just trying to show you root, octave pattern. So we know that that's a six. And um, way down below here, we're going to octave that one right up to the top there. So... That's another root note. So this only has three notes, and it's a root, it's like a minor six chord. So if you need a minor six chord, there you go. If you need a minor chord, regular minor, here you go. See, you go exploring around and you're going to dig up some, you're going to find out where some of these interesting chord progressions come from. So I, th I think that sounds pretty musical. Um, wait, let's try again. Okay, so we're considering this as the same root. What is that? We're on, on the E string. On the second, uh, on the A string, I'm on the E note. Sorry. I'm on the... A string on the E note, um, which is the um, seventh fret, playing a minor chord, a minor bar chord. You know that one, right? Now I'm keeping the root, but I'm switching to this selection down here, which stays minor, but includes the six and the root again. What's a root again? Ha ha ha. So what you get there, and why I think that sounds musical, here's some deep thinking with Marco here, um, is that, yeah, that's my name, by the way. You didn't know that. What's the big secret? Tell us, tell us. Um, is that this allows a melody line to be, because this instantly spawned melody lines in my head, like, da -da -da -da. get out of Dodge. Make the get out of dodge song. Get the heck out of dodge. You better get the heck hell out of dodge. Cause see it kind of this is the call. And this is the response. You got some tension and you bring it to release. So kinda neat there. Um I think there's some deeper mechanics going on in there if you invert some of these chords it would turn out that you're going to this is part of a there's some bits of one chord in there that's why it sounds like home I'm pretty sure That was the scale I was thinking about. So what key am I in here? Here's 
my six. So if that's my six, this has got to be my two, right? Yes. So that would be the key of D. there. Interesting. Um, so, you know, like a chord, you know, it's not uh, what you learn in the cage shape, but that would fit in a major scale and it makes its own little kind of sound there. So, so like the hidden chords that are available and where a lot of songs get their unique little um, you know, you wonder, like, how do they think of those chords when they play? Where do they come from? Experimenting like this, knowing your intervals. And so um, let's go back uh, to uh, spend uh, the last 10 minutes I'm going to spend with you here um, going over changing the root note or changing the position of the root right in the same exact shape. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to move this over here now. We're going to lose our note system up here but um rewind the video later and copy that down so you got it i think i have another video where i showed how to make that little chart there for yourself so let's get this thing mapped out here junk junk junkity junk all right so what if we put the root note like say um here we'll start here well maybe we'll do all positions root note here and then, how would we put the root note there? I mean, isn't the lowest note on our guitar going to sound like the root note? Well, not if, not if, like, for example, you know, there's a strong keyboard note in the background that's droning this note while the bass player is homing in on this note or a bass line of some kind is um, res keeps on, you know, bringing the line back to this note. Then it's going to pretty be pretty established that this is actually the root of the piece and the guitar's low chord is just going to be uh, an added note in the mix because it's higher than the uh, actual sounding bass notes. If it's just your guitar playing alone, this may um, not ring out correctly. You're just going to basically always hear this as a dominant seventh chord. But remember, there's playing with the band. Playing, playing with the band, right? Okay. So if we got a root here, what is this? It becomes a two. How do we know that? Really quick. Well, there's a root going down there. Step up from the root. A whole step. It's a natural two. So if that's the case, what do we got down here? I believe that's a... Tritone. So we have a flat five. And then we have down here, we have a, um, which is why, you know, they say, you know, that dominant seven, though, it has the tritone. Well, there's your tritone interval in the chord right there. We just expose that. doesn't show up. It's just a flat seventh to a third when you um, consider it as a standard um, explained from a guitar point of view dominant seventh chord with no band involved. You'll just have the root, you know, uh, flat seventh to a third. But the truth is, that is a tritone interval. So when you see that shape on your guitar fingerboard, that's a tritone. Anywhere that you play it, that is a tritone interval. And it just never even sounds very good. Whew. 
Now, here's a neat thing. The tritone is always in a row. So if you notice, I mean, like, if that's a tritone, and this is a tritone, and this is a tritone, and this is a tritone. Oops, that's not one. It goes like this. In a diagonal row up your fretboard in that direction. Aside from the B string shift that opens it up like a power chord interval. Um, all tritones. And they work in a little row on your fretboard. Just a little side note. So you know what your tritones are off from watching this video. Um, down here, what is this one? So uh, we're going to go back here. Um, same way we went root 2. We're going to go... Um, that would be the root. That'll be the root when you say goodbye. So that's a flat 7th. So we've got a pretty awkwardly spelled chord here. We would have a a flat fifth we are getting a diminished chord when we do if the root is playing here um, we just went diminished so if you're um, perhaps if the piece of music you were playing you hear something that happens sometimes that guitarists are always thinking about you know, you know going to different parts of the fretboard to finger all these new chords when only thing that happened in the music was the root changed and the chord could stay right where it was and have a completely new flavor. Um, let's try to hear that. Um, let me try to give you this example. So I'm going to drone a note here on a keyboard and that's going to be, let's do a, a low. You can hear they all sounded somewhat harmonious together because the change in root still was within the chord quality that I was playing on the guitar. So um, it didn't have the diminished sound that I thought it would have. Um, it sounded actually more harmonious than I thought it would, but whatever. Um, that's changing the root there. Let's just move on and change it to down a couple spaces and call this a lesson. For whomever might watch this, you never know. I've been seeing um, my videos get about 15 to 20 views, so that's not bad. Out of 700 subscribers, that's what I expect. You know, only a small percentage will actually watch what you do. Maybe a lot of them are uh, tuned out to the channel already or, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, or waiting for, they wait for um, uh, edited videos, which I never make. But I got to get on that. So roots here. So what's here? Sounds to me like a flat third. Um, because remember the uh. The uh, interval looks like a major third from the um, fourth string to the, th uh, or from the third string to the second string because of the string shift there between the G and the B string, string as we always mention here. And you should hopefully know that by now. Um, what do we got here way up at the top or anywhere else on this? Well, we know that's a tritone again, so. See how that's kind of interesting? No matter where you put the root in that one, the, 
it'll, you, it'll always, it's, since it's a tritone interval, that one will always be switched around. If the root's there, that'll be a fifth. If the root's there, that'll be a flat fifth. In that direction, that is your, this on the fretboard, this is your tritone row. If you choose that note from this note in this direction or that direction, that is always a tritone jump. Kind of neat, huh? It's the geometry built into the uh, grid of the fretboard. Kind of like an axis point, but axis like A X I S. But anyways, um, deeper subject that we're gonna go into today, or concept. <clears throat> So right off the bat, we're spelling out flat five root um, flat third again. We're really uh, similar to um, this spelling. And oh yeah, that's why this one didn't come across as full diminished because it's lacking the uh, there was no major or minor third in there. Ah, mm, mm hmm. So I left it just kind of open and uh, funky sounding. Anyways, um, with the root here, we're gonna get a flat fifth and a flat third. Uh, creating a pretty full-on diminished sound. And what does that bring up here? What do we got? What would we have up there? Um, well, we know that our root is actually here, and from our root note, that is a 5-sharp five, 5, right? Try that again. That's a root note. We know above a root note is always a fifth. That's got to be a sharp fifth. Okay, so. That is a pretty funkadelic um, series of intervals to have in a chord. Um, my guess is this is not going to sound okay. So let's try that. We are, uh, we'll, we'll be down here on the root guitar root note on the B string the low on the E string low E string we're on the B so there's that B dominant 7th chord sound again but we're going to put a root note on our uh, what note is that our D sharp E flat so let's try it found that strikingly powerful um an amazing amount of tension right there complete emergency uh chord um yeah i thought that was a uh, pretty uh, intense for a second or two <laughs> note to self don't try to sing on your videos <laughs> Anyway, so quite ugly amount of dissonance in there, but had some I thought usability in a certain context. Finally, it happened to me right in front of my face, and I just cannot hide it. Um, I'm going to uh wrap up this lesson with the root in the final position here let's put the root way up top jazz melody style um so if we have our root here then what does everything else become here oh my god we'll still have a tritone um but we're gonna have a root down here Six. 
correct. Let's see, six. Um, wait. Six. I'm looking for this note. Six. Flat seven. Seven. Root. Six, for sure. And so, what do we got here? Above a six. Try tone from a sixth. Hmm. So that's taken an awfully long time to figure out in my mind's eye. So that's not very good. Um, but what do we got? We got a six here. And uh, it's like I'm tired now, and so I'm drawing a brain fart because I just want to get on to my next projects here, which is making more content for my other channels. I'll link those below. If you like cars, I'm going to go um, spend the rest of the day uh, doing my some content for my uh, collection of weird Chevy uh, cars, this Chevy Monza I got. <clears throat> if you don't know what kind of car that is and you don't care, well, let's just keep moving on here. Um, so that's a six. That's a six. What would this be? Six. Um, two, 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 two. What the freaking hell is that? Oh, oh my God. So... Wait, oh wait, wait, I got this. So if that's a six, that's a one, two, and a three, flat third. Wow. What I did was, I know that um, in my major scale, this is what I did in my mind's eye to figure that out um, once I stopped brain farting. I know that in my um, mind's eye, my scale goes, um, I'm not going to circle the boxes here, but it goes one, two, three, four five six so i needed this note so i knew that i had a one two flat third third flat third make sense to you so there's our determination that we have a flat third there so what do we have way up on top here if we have a flat third here we know that we have a root here Five there, so we just went from knowing uh, two ways that I have a root right here. First of all, there's the octave of that right there, so we have a root there, and of course, uh, the relationship between that note and that note is always uh, root third. So I know I have a root note here, and so what's this in relation to my root note? Well, above my root note, I always have a fifth. What's just down from my fifth is a fourth, four, five, root, four, five, root. Um, when you hear one. Four five one four five. It's the same thing. Don't count that. It's part of the last explanation. So, anyways, um, what did we say that was a fourth? So now we've got a weird spell in there. We've got a four happening down low. A flat third is in there. A six might have a context somewhere, but I don't think that would really be a um. A great note. So let's explore it, I guess, sonically and see what we find. We're here. So we want this note. Instead of putting it down low, I'm going to put it way up high. I'm going to drone it way up high, pedal tone it. sound as spectacularly awful as I thought it would. I thought I would really um, be on to, uh, you know, picking out these intervals as simply not being the obvious chord tones, not having an obviously chordal sound, but eh, 
it wasn't too bad. It seemed to have a uh, context somewhere. Probably need um, a little bit more uh, background context from a baseline, a functioning baseline over a rhythm to really put the um, effect of these, you know, chord choice, tone choices um, uh, as they, uh, as, as they're, you know, really functioning. I think um, it was a little diluted in the volume uh, the the my background pedal tone is kind of louder than the guitar is not punching through. It's only on a clean tone, um, and uh, there's no bass line and rhythm, so there's not um, a lot of context to <clears throat> for your ear to process what's going on. So it probably just jumbles the crap intervals around and picks out the root six. I think is what I heard the most. Seemed to be seemed to sound kind of happy than having a flat third in there. So. That was today's lesson. There's an hour. I guess we usually wrap up in an hour, so I think that was kind of good. It's where I wanted to be, right on target, with another hour for a Sunday. Um, if you know a better time that I could be on line, if it's a Monday night, Tuesday night, um, let me know. I believe that um, I may start a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, hour-long session every evening to be consistent and to give people an actual time to find me. Um, that's Eastern Standard Time. So let me know if that would work for you. Like um, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That'll be a little earlier. Over, it'll be way late in Europe. And it'll be uh, in all the other parts of the world. And it'll be kind of early over on the West Coast. So I don't know. But that would be about the best time. Or way early in the morning too. I could do like a 6 a.m. lesson. But the neighbors would probably be pissed at that. So, um great to uh be able to give provide this lesson today hope let me know in the comments did this have any impact did like hey that's cool i you know can do this for myself or that helps me you know explore and find chords for my song i hope it does um let me know but that's what i need to know is your feedback so i know what's going on um like and subscribe you know, show some support that way at the minimum. So I at least know, you know, this is worthwhile to anybody before I kind of perhaps maybe give this up. I don't know. And, um, ooh, old mouse, um, you know, uh, support us if you want to see updated equipment, updated lessons, the ability for me to make real process lessons every day of the week. Um, you know, and have content coming out at least, you know, once a week, if not twice a week, like a popular YouTube channel does. Um, but those people can do that because they're getting supported on, you know, between their merchandise and their, which I don't have any of, um, and their Patreon channels to um, be able to constantly provide you um, c uh, content. And so when, when they tell you, you know, this is, you know, we thank you, this is, you know, all because of you, they mean it. Is That's what it really is or else you have to have a 9 to 5 job that just takes you away from your ability to do all this. So I'll throw some um, gummy bear picks. No, they're just picks. They're not gummy bears like a 12-tone does. On his videos um, that I advertised in the beginning, just a great channel. Go uh, check out 12-tone if you can. Great. Um, I think I'm going to do a top 10 list of like my favorite, maybe a top 5 list of my favorite YouTube channels. Um and uh, yeah, I'll leave them secret for today. So you got something to watch next time. Thank you for watching all this time. And uh, I hope you have a great day. See you next time.